Episode 1, a success. We appreciate all the views, likes, and shares. You know, the support was amazing. Make sure you make, go to my webpage, the www.catricerainshow.com to view past and present shows. Also, tonight, after this episode airs, please go to the webpage to view it again. Make sure you watch, like, and share. So now, are you ready for episode two? Good. So as you can see, I'm on 7th and Market, a street that normally most Oaklanders drive down every day to go to work, school, and home. But on May 27, 2012, while Ronnie Earl Kidd was driving down 7th and Market and stopped at the light, he was senselessly shot in the head. No one should ever have to die like this. Now let me ask, I know you're probably thinking, murderer, criminal, drug dealer? No, Ronnie was a wonderful son to our guest today, Evelyn Kidd. He was a loving husband of seven years to Serena. He was a a loving and committed father of three boys, one with autism. We have to find the killer that put him to rest. So today, I've been given the honor to interview Evelyn Diller. And we have a special guest with her today, which is Ronnie's wife, Serena. So you ready for episode two? Good. All right. So we're going to go over to Evelyn and Serena and talk a little bit about what happened. But before we walk over, I want you to do two things for me. I want you to one, have a moment of silence for Evelyn and her family and everyone that's going through tragedies such as this. Then I want you to stop. Don't turn from Facebook, but stop, grab a pen and paper because at the end of the show, we're gonna give you some resources that can help you or anyone else going through a tragedy such as this. So are you ready to talk to Evelyn? She's promised to keep it real and give us all the information about the case. Hopefully someone out there knows what happened to Ronnie and we can put him to rest peacefully. All right, come come join us on Facebook. Nice to meet you. So today we're we're able to interview Evelyn, Serena, and Ernest about the Ronnie Earl Kid murder. So Evelyn, I know this is a sensitive topic for you, but I really appreciate you allowing us to bring to light what actually happened. Can you take us back in time and tell us what happened on May 27? Okay, it was uh, Ronnie got off work early uh, that morning. Um, and came by my house to get his keys that he had got locked out of the house. And he got his keys, his wife, Serena, and their children was at my house uh, to spend a night. We was all going to church that morning. And um, he came by, got the, uh, his house key, left the house. And from that point where we heard that he came down here and he stopped right here at the light. And while he was at the light, someone came on the left side of him and came up, shot through the window, and shot him, and kept going. So let me ask, because I know a lot of people say, oh, Ronnie was in West Oakland, he was doing something dirty. Can you please tell our viewers truly the type of man Ronnie really was? Okay, Ronnie was not from West Oakland. 
Ronnie lived in Hayward, California. He lived there with his wife and he had three sons. And Ronnie never been in no trouble. He never been arrested a day in his life. Never had no problems on him as a young man growing up. Uh, Ronnie was, what you would say, a swear. He, his wife, his children, that was his life and working. Okay. He would work two jobs right. to take care of his family. So if I remember correctly, when we spoke on the phone, you told me that that morning he was actually working a double shift right. and was coming off of work. Yes, Is that true? Worked. Yes, yeah. he was. Yeah, worked a double shift and he was coming off and he was wanting to go home to Hayward to go to sleep. Right. So now, I know this is an odd question, but I want people to reach into Ronnie's world. You had mentioned he had worked for Southwest Airlines for 11 years. So how many people actually came to the funeral? Because I'm understanding that a lot of his co-workers actually joined yeah, at the funeral. It was uh, where the church counted. It was over 700 people at the service. Wow. Yes. It was over 700. 700. It was to the point that we could not let no one else in the church. Wow. So let me ask, with everything that's happening in Oakland, do you feel that Oakland needs to make a change in the way that they handle these cases and situations like this? Yes. They okay. really need to make a change. Out of all the things that you've dealt with in dealing with your son's murder, what have you seen change? I really haven't seen no change. Um, they always there in the beginning. They, when you say they, who are they? The, the police department, uh, uh, different people who comes out and want to show their support. After a little time go by, nobody calls, nobody don't care. Uh, we, I did my daughter a lot of details about how we would call the police department and what they would do to us and how his case was going. So, Serena, tell us what you dealt with when dealing with Oakland Police Department. How were they initially handling the case, and were they giving you updates as the case was going on? Um, no, they were not, absolutely not giving me any information. I had to call them day in, day out, uh, week after week, um, just asking questions, constantly giving them updates of things that I've heard um, from people he worked with. and people, you know, that heard things, you know, um, it's always rumors circulating and stories circulating um, of what people saw or thought, you know, things like that. Um, and, and um, yeah, they just, I, I've, given, I've given them a bunch of clues and everything, like um, license plate numbers they still haven't checked into, they never went up to his job, that was the last place he left, went right before the incident happened, before the murder. Um, and I've asked them, have you been to his job yet? You know, that's usually the first first thing uh, a detective would do. Right. You know, that's like basic, automatic, you know, like so, procedure. Right? right. So do you think that because of all the, the killings that have occurred in Oakland, the, the, the police department feel like this is just another case? If something happens, it happens. If something doesn't, it doesn't. Definitely. Yeah. And I don't... Ronnie definitely wasn't um, a man that was in the streets or had um, problems, hung out, anything like that. Straight to work, back home, every day. Like, that was his everyday routine the whole time, the whole 12 years we were together. And so I, I'm not saying that our case deserves a special attention or anything like that, but um, I know they do look at certain cases, you know, and say, well, Some this guy priority. was hanging out. He probably, you know, did something to somebody. But that, that definitely wasn't the case with Ronnie. So do you think that with the media so now in in the public spotlight about situations that are happening in Oakland, was the media a part of bringing to light situations that happen like this? Do you think that they are instrumental in bringing more awareness? I, uh, you know, I'm social media. Yeah. So do you think that more, well, not just Catrice Rain Show, but like KPIX, KTVU, were they instrumental in possibly bringing more information to the public? At first, yeah. I would call them and they would come out for all of our um, protests we would have out here, um, right here on 7th and Market. We had a... Um, we had a memorial service, a few memorial services over the years. 
platform um, and every time I would call, they would say, oh, we remember you. Yeah, we're going to come out. You know, they, they did a few times. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, I would call them. We'll be out here waiting. We'll be doing our march we're out here for two, three hours at a time, um, candlelight vigils and things like that. And they just would never, they wouldn't come out. Like the last few times, they, they just stopped showing up. I would just, we would be out here waiting on them and they Everybody would just be like, where are they? You know, okay. they just stopped showing up. So now, in doing our research, we uh, understand that the police department think it was a dark-colored, newer A4 Audi with tinted windows. Has that still been the case? Is that is that still the information? That's what they're saying. And every time I call and ask them, is, is there any uh, um, updates or uh, anybody came forward or anything like that? They would, they, all they would tell me is nobody's came in. Nobody's came in. Okay. Of course, nobody's just going to come in and say, oh, I shot this man or, oh, my friend or sister or, or you know, shot this man. Like, nobody's going to do that. You have to, as a detective, that's your job to get out there and dig and hit the pavement and dig deep and find out what happened to these innocent lives, you know, like. Right. They just not doing their job. They do not care at all. Okay. Evelyn, well, let me just ask you. you. I understand that you are starting a foundation in Ronnie's honor. Can you talk a little bit about it? I see the posters, Enough is Enough, Stop the Violence in Oakland, and just period with our young black men. Yes. Um, what are you doing to move this foundation along? Well, last year I, I opened it up with a program. And it, it was successful. I uh, had uh, the captain of this district, police department, did show up. I had a couple of foundations came out and supported me. Uh, of course, my church, Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, supported me. And um, I've been going out, you know, just trying to get a lot of research so I can help someone go through. I hope no one have to go through this. Right. But right. if you do, I want to be able to be supportive to them because uh, the Qaddafi fam uh, Foundation, she was very helpful to me. Okay. And uh, I would love to be that supportive to somebody else. Okay. So you mentioned the Qaddafi Foundation and just a little bit of history on her. Marilyn Washington Harris's son was shot right. on an Oakland school campus. Yes. So she created the foundation actually right. to help people get money for violent vi victims. So, right. so I don't know if you guys know on Facebook, but... Um, this foundation is called the California Victims Compensation Program, or Cal VCP, and they actually help victims of crime in Oakland get money, either for burial or for family support. Is that correct? Yes, they do. And and, and when, they have a lot of different things that they help out with family because I have, I use the um, to see the therapist. Okay. Like, uh, they take care, like me, my. Uh, my immediate family, my, his wife, his children, and um, they pay. They will pay up to one year of services. And if you need more time, they can be extended. And it's very helpful. Very helpful. They have a list of uh, different therapists that you go through. And uh, definitely, uh, uh, okay. you know, putting up the pieces. And we want to know what has been the most influential thing that has happened out of this situation i know it wasn't a positive situation that occurred you lost your loved one but what has turned around for you and your family out of this situation hmm. either bringing awareness to what's happening that, in oakland that's that's one of the things i just i mean i used to hear about it all the time people lo losing their loved ones mm -hmm. But losing your loved one, it's you never can really understand it until it happened to you. So now I have a, a heart for it, a really a heart for it. I always did, but I, my heart is there for it, and that's why I want to help someone else because it's a very hard thing to go through. Right. So, so how can people donate or support or help the foundation that you are building on behalf of Ronnie? Um, right now, I'm just trying to get it started. I will be having stuff out on Facebook. Okay. When I start, I'm going to have another program coming up soon. And what's your Facebook page so people can find you? Uh, Evelyn Dillon. Okay. Just Very Evelyn good. Dillon. Okay. All right. And Serena, are you also on Facebook as well? Yeah. Okay. And where can we find you? And is there anything else that you want Oakland residents, Oakland Police Department, the DA, the mayor to know?
know about your case and what you would like to see happen next? I would like for them to open it if it's closed. I mean, we don't, I don't have no information. I can't, when I call, they don't return your calls. I just want to know, is it open? And what are you doing? What are some of the things that you have done? We've been trying and we can't get no information. Okay. You know, just, you just, you know, let us know about that. Okay. Well, I, I just want to make sure we've touched on everything. Is there anything that we've missed? Anything that needs to get out to the public? No. No. Okay. Sir, if you know you anything, me? if you know anything, if you know something, please just please you can inbox me or inbox Serena. You know your show. My show. Uh, and just. Box. You, you don't have to even let us know who you are. Just, you know, this needs to, you know, this needs to be stopped. And we, if we don't keep our mouth closed, it's going to keep on going. Right. People right. want it. People, mothers are out here hurting. This is my whole life changed. Right. My whole life has changed. I'm not the same person I used to be. Yeah. You know, that was my only son. My only son. Well, I want to give some information to our viewers. Um, it's a very sensitive topic, and again, I want you to send prayers to the, the Dillard family, the Kidd family. Um, I want you, if you know anything about this case, to please call the Oakland Police Department. The phone number is 510-777-8572. Now, if you're afraid and don't want to say your name, there is an anonymous line at 1-800-222-TIPS. It's easy. 1-800-222-TIPS. Now, also, there are resources online for anybody that's going through this bereavement process. One of the websites that we, I found very, very um, instrumental was bereavementparentsusa.org. They help parents and families um, with the, the, grieving, the grieving process. So, please go online. Get your resources. Although we have not found the suspect that did this this violent crime there are still resources that you can go to to help pick up the pieces for you and your family another website that I want to just give to you guys is um, again the California Victims Compensation Program they provide money to victims of violent crimes in Oakland and based on the crime will determine the amount of money you get but that website is vcgc cb.ca.gov backslash victims. We want you to get involved. If you see something, this family should not have to worry about burying their loved one without knowing who did this to them. So again, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in to the Catrice Rain Show. And I want you to make sure you tune in to our next episode as well. If you know something again about the kid case, please say something. I want to thank Evelyn and Serena and Earl for stopping by today to talk about the Ronald Earl kid case. And again, report whatever you have. Please report whatever you have. Again, thank you for making uh, the Catrice Rain Show a success. I want you to go to my webpage, www.catricerainshow.com, to find out more resources. The resources that we said today will also be on the site. And also, I just want to say thank you again for all the support. Me and my sister, Dee Dee, we hustling out here. We're trying to make things um, go be better in our community. We want to make Oakland a better place to be. Please visit our web pages. Go support. Give back to the communities. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you again for tuning in. Good night.